Uh, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Stephen Dake. This is a session about reinventing networking, uh, a deep dive into Istio's uh, gateway, uh, multi-cluster gateways. <clears throat> so I don't know if a lot of people know what an Istio service mesh is. I'm going to start with the basics. The first and foremost purpose of a service mesh is to connect services together. Uh, when we connect services together, we use Envoy. That runs in a process next to another process, typically injected into a pod. Uh, the service mesh connects those pods, to those, those, those sidecars together into a mesh, and that's one of the fundamental properties of, a, of an Istio service mesh. Uh, so that connectivity is very important because that's how we connect everything together. It's L7 connectivity versus L3, which is what typical networking is based upon. So the next fundamental thing of a service mesh is security. Uh, if we look at how the internet has evolved, uh, there really hasn't been a lot of security built into the internet. Uh, the way Istio works specifically, and with our data plane of Envoy, <coughs> we use TLS for security, and we use pass-through mutual TLS to provide multi-cluster capabilities uh, in security, and this, this is crucial, because without security, People are looking at your traffic. That's not good. When you surf the internet, now we have to use TLS certificates when we access websites. This solves that problem for all traffic. So of course there's control. Uh, <coughs> control is the idea that we can control the traffic, we can control where it goes, we can, can control what it does. Uh, I'm not gonna talk a lot about control in this multi-cluster deep dive because that is not the purpose of this session. But that is one of the cool features of a service mesh. And we don't lose this capability with multi-cluster. Uh, it's something we get uh, just naturally as part of using Istio. And finally, there is observability. Observability is key. One of the most valu valuable things that Istio provides, uh, it provides this via Prometheus. Uh, you can use Prometheus with a variety of adapters. Uh, essentially, it allows you to watch all the traffic in the network, what it's doing, what your requests are doing, what your responses are doing, uh, what their timings are, uh, pretty much anything you can think of, we monitor. Uh, this is huge. This is a very valuable thing. I'm also not going to spend a lot of time on this in this deep dive, but this, this is what Istio is. It, fundamentally, this is what Istio provides. <clears throat> so in the beginning, there was a platform. Uh, there was probably the Unix or, or the UNVAC, but let's talk about the PDP-11 because I think that's what this is really focused about. So this individual, Leonard Kleinrock, yes, he invented, uh, sort of invented ARPANET. There was a lot of people involved with this effort. He invented ARPANET with a lot of people on his team. He's a professor. He ha had a lot of students helping him. And what he did, the first thing he did was he connected two wide area networks. He connected UCLA and SRI. So these, are two, these were two PDP, I think 11s. Uh, they connected over wide area networks. Now, that was one of the three equations, or one of the three kind of vectors we needed to make networking a thing. So this individual here, oh, sorry, the entire internet, 1969, pretty boring. There's four nodes, uh, four PDP-11s. This individual here, Bob Metcalf, I think most people are familiar with Bob. Uh, he invented Ethernet. Uh, in 1973, he created the LAN. And there may have been other LAN protocols before 1973, but he really standardized the LAN. So this was the idea that you could have a bunch of platforms connected locally in a local area, but there was no way to connect the LAN with the WAN. That didn't exist. That, that was not a thing. So there's platforms and LANs. There's the ability to connect WANs. And then this individual came along, Jenny Strazazar. <coughs> we owe her a great day, debt to, uh, to networking because what she did is she invented the gateway. The gateway is what a router is today. So when we think about gateways, we think about routers. She's the person that did the first implementation. She's the person that made it happen. <clears throat> now, what does this mean? This means we could connect LANs with WANs, and we could connect multiple LANs with multiple WANs. And this is where the internet began. So that was the evolution of, of networking. Let's talk about the reinvention of the networking with Istio. I'm not going to talk, a, this is like a geek slide. I love geek slides because I'm a geek. Um, but I'm not going to talk a lot about this slide other than to say this is Istio in one environment. 
So if you have a cluster, this is one Istio. This is what it looks like. These are the some of the most of the components. Uh, the ability to connect is there, but it's just one cluster. That's a problem. We need multiple clusters. So if we look at what we can do with that, this is another more complex slide. I'm going to talk more about these slides in detail later. If we look at what we can do, this is a symmetric system. So we can have two of these together. We can connect two of them together. And by connecting two of them together, we've really built a gateway. Now you'll see here there's a gateway described. Gateway operates much like the gateway that was invented by the previous individuals. Now, <clears throat> two, two con connections between two clusters, that's pretty cool. But really what we need to get to is the simplicity. So I want to show first the simplicity. Um, I'm ta I've taken all stuff out. I've just added the control plane, application services, which have sidecars, and the gateways. The gateways connect the applications. The control plane controls the sidecars. And then if we take that model and we use symmetry again, we can connect three gateways together. We can continue this process on and on and on and on. We can have more than three gateways. We can have 100 gateways. We can have 1,000 gateways uh, <clears throat> with the same replicated control plane across all the systems. This is how we're reinventing networking. But this wouldn't be very cool if it were insecure, right? I mean, if you have TCP protocol transferring over the network and there were no security built into it, that would be a huge problem. So Istio provide, excuse me, Istio provides via MTLS security. MTLS is a protocol. <clears throat> it's sort of based upon TLS. Uh, it's beyond the scope of my talk, so I can't really get into the details of it. But MTLS is used to communicate within the cluster, intercluster, And then pass-through mutual TLS is used to communicate between the gateways. So there we've got security. And then magically, we pick up the other two cool features of the Istio service mesh, or the other two capabilities. This is huge. This is why we want service mesh. This is why we want multi-cloud, because we are reinventing networking. <clears throat> OK. So the Istio architecture, I'll talk a little bit about this. Um, there's Citadel. Citadel, you think, the best way to think of Citadel is a certificate uh, management service. It provides certificates to the rest of the service in Istio. Uh, Galley communicates configuration information for, by reading the Kube API. It reads service additions and removals and communicates that to Pilot. Uh, now, you see on this diagram, I also have it communicating to the gateways. This does not exist yet, but it will in the future. Uh, this communication from Galley to the gateways enables us to connect the clouds together. I'm going to talk more about this in the future. I just want to get the basics down. The injector, uh, whenever you do a kubectl apply, what happens is that request hits the kube API. That's sent to the injector. The injector says, OK, please inject this stuff on top of, the, on top of it. The stuff is the sidecar, the Envoy sidecar. It goes back to the kube API, and the kube API instantiates the, the, the deployment. And that's the model of how it works. Um, Pilot is responsible for calculating the state of the mesh. So you've got all these Envoy sidecars. Let's say you have 300 services in your mesh. Uh, Envoy or Pilot calculates the Envoy um, discovery service, uh, the XDS services, which are also beyond the scope of this talk. Uh, XDS, the best way to think about that is a discovery protocol for all of the mesh. And what Pilot does is communicate with all those different sidecars in your mesh and make that happen. It connects that, calculates it, and connects everything together, provides that connectivity. Um, finally, there's a mixer. I'm not going to talk a lot, a lot about mixer. Mixer is a telemetry piece. Uh, the gateway. The gateway is just another Envoy proxy. It's specially configured to enable pass-through MTLS. So this is the SDR architecture. This is symmetric. This is two clouds connected together. The clouds could be any cloud provider within reason. Their load balancers have to work properly. Uh, sometimes that's a challenge. There's some other limitations I'll, I'll get, get to shortly. So service discovery. <clears throat> what is service discovery? That's, that's a good question. Uh, so, for, so in my mind, service discovery is two things. Uh, it's, it's the ability of an application to discover another service via DNS locally. That's one thing. And it's the ability to discover, to, so to convert a DNS name to an IP, and it's the ability to, to, to do that conversion remotely. So if you've got a remote cluster, it needs to be able to discover 
those remote services. This is what service discovery is. So we took, we took a couple different approaches, and there's probably more than what I'm going to represent here. First approach we took, um, <clears throat> you probably saw John come up here. Uh, we, he mostly led this work. Um, John mostly led the work of Pilot and Kube API communicating with each other. And what happened there is what we wanted to do is we wanted Pilot to be able to read from multiple Kubernetes services. Um, so how that ended up working is we'd have one pilot, we'd store all of the um, kube API credentials, so all, all of your dash kube.config files, we'd store those in secrets, in a secret registry, in every cluster, we'd replicate that throughout all the clusters, and then we would access the kube API directly to do discovery. This provided endpoint discovery, it didn't necessarily provide service discovery in the way that we needed, but this was a good building block. This was a good key building block. One of the problems and challenges of this, though, is it, it does require routing on your pod network, which is not really how Kubernetes is designed. Um, so this is an option, this is a capability. There's been other talks about service mesh, uh, Istio service mesh here, uh, and I think people have talked about this specifically. So what came along in like 0.7 of Istio or 0.8 was the idea of a gateway. The idea of a gateway is essentially to route traffic in or out uh, from a mesh. And you route it in and out. Now, 0.8 wasn't quite ready. It was sort of worked. It didn't do mutual, mutual TLS, to my knowledge, maybe it didn't. I just didn't understand how to use it. Uh, 1.0 wasn't quite ready. Didn't do discovery. 1.1, which is available today for download, it does discovery. It does uh, secure mutual TLS. We've got pass-through mutual TLS with gateways. The documentation is there. Uh, it requires some difficulty. There's some difficulty around configuration. So we'll get into that. Uh, first, the connecting the gateways. <clears throat> so connecting the gateways, you have to have a shared root of trust, which means you need to be able to register certificates. Uh, you can create your certificates as you like. Um, the root certificate has to be very, very carefully handled. Because if you lose one root certificate on a cluster, your hundreds of clusters have been compromised. So you really have to take care of that root certificate. And actually in 1.2, we're increasing the security there by running Citadel in its own namespace so people can't access that information at all. Uh, so it's completely locked down. So <clears throat> that's, that's coming. Um, but the clusters must have a shared root namespace. This is an example I show here of how to create it using the tarball. These are pre-created certs. You can create your own. They're fairly straightforward to create. Take about two hours to go through the documentation if you uh, are dedicated. So <clears throat> here's the service entry. Boy, this thing looks like a mess. Uh, the best way to describe a service entry is a way to express a remote service in a cluster. So I want to know where a remote service is. That's what a service entry is. Uh, there's four parts to a service entry. There's the location, the mesh internal, mesh external. Mesh internal means it's part of the internal mesh. Mesh external means it's like a virtual machine, bare metal, that sort of thing. Uh, the next thing is the <coughs> addresses. So the addresses are node local addresses. I'm going to talk more about this in a future slide. But needless to say, the node local address uh, it needs to be unique per cluster, but it doesn't need to be unique per multi-cluster. So you can, you've got a lot of work, address space to work with here. Um, you've got a slash eight, I believe, in the 127 network. Of course, you have to use some of that for your host. Uh, now, the cool thing about this host network is this host, um, host local, local networking, local, local network, is that it does not leave the node. Um, so we use it to map I IPs to names for discovery. Um, the address is our gateway. So the gateway is just a load balancer uh, in front of a service, uh, what's called ingress gateway inside of Istio. And finally, there's that port 15443. Now, what is that? 15443, that's our pass-through mutual TLS. That's how we do uh, mutual TLS between multiple clusters. So this is a challenge, because we have to create one of these for every service in an opposing cluster. So Frank Badunsky, but, but, Badunsky, sorry Frank, if you're out there, uh, came up with this idea of generating these. So he said, well, you know, instead of, because we have this information, why don't we just generate them? 
And he wrote a nice blog post about that. And he said at the end of the blog post, his conclusion was, we can generate this information on the fly. You don't need to configure this. Now, I'm going to show a demo where I have configured this stuff manually. Uh, that's not how I would do it, but that's a way you could do it. Um, and finally, there's Core DNS. So Core DNS, cool, really cool tech, really love it. What we do with Core DNS is we override Core DNS. We put a stub in there. Uh, the stub does translation from our local IP, or from that uh, node local IP to, uh, to a database we keep track of that tracks the service entry. So the service entries get mapped to node local IPs through that registration process of the service entry, and then we stub out to a proxy of Core DNS. Without Core DNS, this system wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. So core DNS is essential. Um, you could do this with cube DNS if you're on a really old version of Kubernetes, uh, but you still need our core DNS integration point. Uh, without that, it wouldn't work. And it's just built into the system. The, heart, the part, part that's not built into the system is setting up the, um, setting up the proxy, which is what is shown here. This is all documented upstream, by the way, so people are free to read the documentation. Um, now, <clears throat> I'm really going on a limb here. I'm going to demo the hipster shop demo. Um, hopefully, I don't offend anybody because uh, I'm not a hipster myself. I'm a geek, as I mentioned. Um, this is a screenshot from the hipster shop website, uh, which is at the bottom of the screen there. Um, I've reworked this demo to run across three clouds. So that's what, that was the original demo that runs across one cloud. Cool thing about the hipster demo is it's built, it's been integrated into Istio already, so I don't have to do that work. Uh, that's why I use it easy. <clears throat> so I re reworked it a little bit. I've got some, some services running on AKS. I've got some services running on EKS. And I have even some services running on my bare metal machine, running Metal LB in my home behind my Eero. And that's what I'm going to demo. So I'll demo that now. Pray to the demo gods. OK. So I want to show you a couple of different things first. I've got this go.sh. Um, I type fast with lots of mistakes. Basically, what this does is <clears throat> it applies the manifest that I've broken apart. I've taken the manifest from the, book, from, from the demo, uh, from the, the hipster shop demo, and there's 10 or 11 different microservices. I've broken them up in, into three and, and three and five. And that's what this first step is. I'm applying the services. And then I apply SEs, the service entries, for the various clouds for Azure, GCP, and my own system. So that's what this script does. I'm going to run it. Um, we can see, like if I go to CL2, CL2 is my command for going to cluster two. It just copies a cube config. I know it's not the best thing in the world, but that's how I do it. Um, like if I do a cube control, uh, get pods. There's no pods. Uh, cube cuddle, get pods. There's no pods on cluster one either. Cube cuddle, get pods. There's no pods there either, because I'm starting with a fresh system. I have installed Istio on here. I've installed Istio following the documentation. Documentation's upstream. Uh, it, so I'm going to go back to CL2. I'm going to do my go.sh, and uh, we'll let it go. <coughs> now it's deploying the services. Then it will deploy the service entries in theory. Now we see it's deploying the service entries now. Now remember, the service entries tell us about remote entries. So we need to deploy them on two clouds for every service we have. We're going to automate that. We're going to fix that. That's going to happen. Uh, but this is an example of how you can use multi-cluster today, and this works. Uh, so if I do keep cuddle, get um, service dash in Istio system, a butterfly keyboard, which uh, Apple just recalled. Um, and then if I, if I get um, Istio ingress gateway, now give me an IP to use. So that's my external IP. That's the, this, this, well, that's the load balancer. I'm just going to pull that up. I can cut and paste here. OK, so <clears throat> cool, hipster shop. Now let's, go some, let's do some shopping. Um, 
remember, it was running across three clouds. Uh, pretty crazy. Um, I'm really into hi-fi. You can ask my friends. I'm like a super hi-fi nerd. I see this vintage record player. I'm digging it. Um, I'm taking a look at it. Pretty cool tone arm. Pretty cool uh, cartridge. Probably needs to be replaced. Oh, it's only 65 bucks, and it still works. Can't, can't complain about that. I'll add that to my cart. And then uh, I'm going to browse for more products. I don't really like shopping, but hey, uh, you know, let's go shopping. So vintage typewriter. As you can see, I need help with my typing. Maybe that'll help. Um, this typewriter looks good in your living room, but it doesn't say it works. Uh, I'll go ahead. I'll go for it. Now, I'm going to check out. I'm going to place my order. And the order is complete. Now, this is... <laughs> Take my word for it. This is using all 11 microservices across three different clouds. This is fundamental. I've never seen anybody do this. That doesn't mean it hasn't happened. I just haven't seen it. Uh, so if you have seen it, cool. Tell me about it later. I want to hear about it, because I'd like to work with those sor sorts of folks. Um, that's the demo. Now I want to talk about <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, now I want to talk about uh, what we're going to do next. What's the automation? Uh, what are we going to do? So MCP, just let me define that real quick. That's a mesh configuration protocol. Uh, Galley is responsible for delivering the mesh configuration protocol uh, to Pilot. And it's going to deliver it to Galley, or sorry, to Pilot. Galley is also going to deliver that to the, um, To the gateways. Yes, gateways. Yes, that's where it's going to deliver it to. Now, this is one cluster. Uh, this, this is a problem because, again, we only have one cluster. Um, how do we, what do we need to do? We, what's our next step? That's what I'm going to answer here. Keep in mind, this is all forward looking. Um, so the, the key here is we need an Envoy filter to make this happen. Now, this thing, wow, this, this, is, this is a piece of work. Envoy filter will allow you to rewrite rules inside your local cluster. Without this, we couldn't do this work. <clears throat> this is another fundamental feature, just like Core DNS. Uh, Envoy has a lot of cool features we use in Istio. This is one of them. Uh, this allows us to have a galley name and replace it with galley so we don't have to map galleys along with the uh, gateways. Because we only want one piece of information we want to conf configure. And that one piece of information is a load balancer IP. And the load balancer IP is only unknown to Pilot. Once Pilot has that information, it can rock and roll. So <clears throat> I'm not going to get into details there. You can read the slides later. I've uploaded them. Um, <clears throat> but again, symmetry at work. Uh, <clears throat> we've got the same thing. Now, SDS, I didn't explain that. The SDS is a secret discovery service. That provides security uh, through gRPC instead of through the typical method of loading secrets through the file system, which is slow and pokey. Uh, so we've, we're moving away from that. We're moving towards SDS. Um, so this, this is symmetry, but again, two nodes. This is a simplified view, so I can take out all of the complexity here and just talk about the stuff that matters. Galley is communicating with the gateway over MCP. So we're going to use a service entry to create a connection between the two galleys. Now, if we do that, we can create a connection between the three galleys. Now, remember, galley is responsible for the distribution of configuration information. That includes the service entries. So if we can do this between three clouds, we can do it between n clouds in theory, or a very large number of clouds. <clears throat> and how do we do this? We need what's called a synthesis registry. I'm going to try to say that three times fast later. Probably going to fail. Um, the synthesis, as I'm feeling already, the synthesis registry is responsible for synthesizing service entries and envoy filters in the remote cluster, in the opposing clusters. So we've got one, and of course, symmetry, we've got two. I really want to call this technology symmetric multi cluster. We've got 16 names on the list to call this stuff, and uh, it's being bike shedded heavily. That's all I can say about it. Uh, well, it's public, but it's being bike shedded heavily. So here we've got the synth, synth we've got two synthesis, yeah, registries. <laughs> got two of them. And now we've got three. And this is all made possible 
with Envoy Filter, made possible with the service entry technology that's part of Istio. <clears throat> now, that's how we get automation. Now, that galley A, B, C, I talked about the need to rewrite the names. Uh, that's how we reference them when we go out the cloud. But when we come in the cloud, we want to reference them as galley. We want to do discovery as galley. So that's why we need that Envoy filter information. That will rewrite galley A to galley. Uh, that way we can reference it. And then finally, <laughs> here's my potential user interface. I say potential because it's actually a bash script I wrote that uh, pretends to be a user interface. But the basic idea is you say Istio cuddle, MC join, and you specify the gateway address, and Istio figures it out through the technologies I've described. Um, so <clears throat> I want to thank everybody for their time here. I know your time is really valuable. I really appreciate your time. Um, I do have time for questions, actually. So that's good. I, I, I saved five minutes. I'm happy to answer your questions. Typically, at this point, I would call up the developers of Istio on stage, but I think we'd probably crush the stage because there's a bunch of us. So I won't do that, but if there's any questions, um, I'm happy to answer if I can. Uh, there's 14 work group leads, I'm only one. So there's 14 subject matter experts. I don't know it all, uh, but I'm happy to try and give it my best. I'm sorry, my hearing's not good. Uh, do, do the pods uh, in, the, in the many clusters need to be in the same addressing namespace? Yeah, so the question was, do the pods need to be in the same addressing namespace? And <clears throat> the answer is no, but if they, if you, if you have the same exact pod in the same namespace, um, RDS will fail. Uh, so this is a problem we need to solve. Um, RDS would fail, so you can't do that. Um, but to your question, yes, you can. That is that that is possible. No. Absolutely, that that, that does work. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Can, yeah. the, can the clusters have uh, the same IP names, the IPs using the same IP blocks for the containers and for the pods? Yes, they can. Uh, that's a really cool feature of this. You can share IP pods or IP addresses in between. You can reuse IP addresses between the separate clusters. So can have three clusters that are three times the pods running with the same IP address, but they can speak with each other? Absolutely, the because the gateway is the only thing that knows about those internal IPs. That's the cool technology behind it. That's the cool feature of this technology. They don't yet. I'd like to get there. Okay. Yes. Uh, OK. Uh, there's a lot of questions. Um, one of the questions was, do, uh, does Istio do uh, BGP peering? The answer is no. I'd like to get there. Second question was, um, same IP address, thank you. Same IP addresses, are they reusable across clusters? And yes, they are because the gateways um, isolate the pod networks between different clusters. So they are reusable. That was, there, that was the two questions. Yes, okay. Um, can we get a mic? Where's the mic? <laughs> Not mic. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, sorry, yeah. I come to you. consideration for high availability of the gateways? <clears throat> high availability of the gateways, I don't know. Not sure. I mean, you could have multiple gateways. Um, so you could replicate the gateways. But high availability is stronger in this case, but it's unmeasured. So I, that's where we're at today with, you with have multiple gateways to a cluster. You could have multiple, multiple gateways, absolutely. That would work. Yeah, that would work. I don't have that working, but that could work. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yes. Does Istio have plans to look at lower levels? So the question is, does Istio have plans to look at lo lower levels below L7? And I believe the answer is maybe L6 and L5, but not really. 
I mean, really, it's about L7 to us. So I think it's all about L7. It's not about L3. And L5, 6 are kind of, I kind of lump them into L7. That's all the same to me. So to achieve difference in depth, you need something else to complement. I think maybe. If you, the question is, do you need de defense? If you want defense in depth, do you need something to complement Istio? Uh, you know, Istio is secure by default. It's built with security built in and within, with that in mind. So if you trust TLS, which we trust all the time, then the answer is you don't really need that. But you could get it with Istio as well. There is that capability. Istio has that capability built in. Oh, thanks. Hi. So my question is, I looked at your demo. So you have, it seems you have created self-source entries for different clusters. So yeah. uh, my question is, to use your demo, uh, for example, if I have two clusters and one has two services, the other one has another two services. So it means I need to create two service entries in cluster A and then create another two service entries in cluster B then make it a connection, right? Yeah, that's, that's exactly correct, yes. OK, thank you. Yeah, sure. Did you, oh. Any other questions? Okay, there's, there's some waving over here. I'm only taking the front, I guess. I'm sorry if you, you know, move up and, or you can catch me after. I'm almost, I'm almost out of time. So for every uh, ingress uh, gateway, um, sorry, Istio ingress gateway that you mm -hmm. connect, uh, then you have uh, uh, n times n minus one connections, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you solve this? complexity because it's exponential, right? So Yes, so the exponential complexity, that's a great question. I believe the way we solve that is through uh, what the gentleman asked, the question of how do we do VGP peering with this? How do we increase the peering model? Um, and we're working on this upstream. Uh, we are working on this. This is happening in a different ways. Uh, this, some of this technology is called split horizon. Uh, it sort of does this, but not exactly. Split so, horizon? Split horizon, yeah, I know. It's a <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called. Uh, I think it's been renamed. I don't know. I can't keep track of the names. There's the names change. So, any um, no, no, yeah. Just I wanted to confirm that it's actually. I saw a lot of lines. So yeah. <laughs> at some point, it, it gets. It, there are many connections going on, and yeah. uh, even if you do that from from Istio CTL, but then under the hood, you will still need to map all of those, right? So yeah, but, that's uh, a that's a great question. We haven't measured the scalability of MCP. Uh, we don't know the answer to that question. We, we are going to have to measure it to find out how well it scales. Uh, I think it will scale pretty well, just based upon how it's designed, it's gRPC protocol, very straightforward, very simple. Um, but we don't know. We don't have the answers yet. Thank you. Sure. I did. Yeah. Can you have um, multiple MTLS connections between two gateways? I believe the answer is yes. Yeah, I believe the answer is yes. Uh, and that goes back to the high availability question. Um, I haven't tested it, so I'm not 100% positive, but I believe the answer is yes. Uh, more questions? OK. Is that so is it for high availability, or is it for service discovery across these different clusters? I mean, what's the use case? Uh, what's the use case? Yeah. That's great. <clears throat> great question. So what's the use case? I mean, you could use multi-cluster for a lot of things. You could separate uh, information, segregate information for um, governmental reasons. Maybe the government says certain information has to go in this cloud, the certain information has to go in this country. That's one use case. There's like a list of 20 use cases. I'm not a marketing person. I'm an engineer. I developed the tech. Um, so you ask me the use cases. I know there's a whole bunch. I know the marketing people have a whole bunch of stuff they want in terms of use cases. And we're making it happen. Um, I can't answer all of the use cases because I don't have them memorized. So, anything else? Did you give a use case or a I did just give one. Yes. Remember, it's really when you have your own cluster, like on-premise, and you want to run GPU on the cloud. Mm -hmm. So usually you want to connect. So. Sorry. Sorry. So if, for example, you have an on-prem uh, cluster and you want uh, GPUs, so the most I think basic use case that I saw. Is people uh, expand a uh, uh, multi cluster with worker node a GPU on, uh, on the cloud. So they can use Istio like, pretty easily to route traffic there. That's, that's a great use case. It's actually, I waited for this feature in 1.1. So. 
Nice, nice. Oh, you're an adopter. I want to thank you as well. The adopters, we, we wouldn't be anywhere without them. Okay, there's a question over here. Is there any questions in the back that I'm missing? Uh, could the person that raise their hand do it again? Oh, sorry. Hiding <laughs> in front. Yeah. Uh, is there a possibility to have traffic steering so I can decide which is my preferred gateway to enter or exit this kind of multiple clouds? And uh, is there some uh, global load balancing feature behind it so I can say, uh, please answer the traffic where you're locally. You're running it on three different cloud, maybe on East Coast, West Coast, and in Asia. And so we want to serve the users maybe more locally from this kind of gateways. Fantastic question. The answer is yes. You can do that through the control features of Istio. Uh, it's not real intuitive how to do that with multi-cluster. Uh, I think we can make it intuitive. First, we need to get multi-cluster working really well first for that functionality. But that's just going to come along for the ride. We're going to get that naturally. So I think I'm out of time. Oh, one more question? OK. So in the service entries that you created uh, uh, that allow you to talk to services across clusters, right? Mm -hmm. I assume you are pointing them the gateway addresses there so that gateway can resolve to the respective services. Exactly, that's right. So are you giving IP addresses of the gateway, or is there a way to resolve them with a the DNS name generically? <coughs> yeah, the way we do that is we specify that in the service entry. Uh, that was one of the four things I talked about in the service entry is that gateway. Um, I want to automate that because I think it's difficult. I think a lot of people think it's difficult to get that correct. But you can do that today. You can specify that and get this to work. This uses no advanced features of Istio except for one, what's so in one one. So you're just specifying the IP address of the gateway, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Good. OK, folks. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time.